grabando? No? Sí, sí. De hecho, no te preguntaba, ¿no te importa no te grabar? No, claro que no. Bueno. Nada, David, gracias por venir. Eh, no sé si nos conocéis un poco, nosotros somos Vers, somos una empresa startup de razonable reciente creación. Nos acabamos de mover a esta oficina hace escasas tres semanas, después de una reforma muy, muy intensa. Y tenemos una aplicación móvil muy, muy sencilla que recomiendo que utilicéis, que es básicamente un sistema de transferencias personales para enviar dinero. Pero no es lo que os quiero contar, simplemente eso, os quiero agradecer que hayáis venido. Eh, haremos un pica pica al terminar, si queréis. Tenemos bebida, tenemos algo de comida, eh, y así nos podemos conocer. Y gente interesada, pues estamos intentando bueno, el proceso de contratar muchos developers porque estamos teniendo un crecimiento interesante, así que cualquier persona developer que le interese colaborar, trabajar aquí, que contacten con ese chico rubio de pelo largo y nos contar un poco. Y luego podemos dar una vuelta a la oficina, ahí tenemos a empleados que ahora van a venir, hay gente que sigue trabajando, o sea que sin tener, sentiros libres de hablar con ellos y de, de compartir este momento. Al final te dejo que, que pienses en tu presentación. Muy bien, castellano o inglés. Preguntas al público. Yo si la gente no tiene problema con el inglés, casi que un poco mejor, vale. así el vídeo tiene un poco más de calidad. Muy bien. Bueno, pues... Bueno, well, my name is Pablo, and I've been, I've been hacking the Linux kernel for something like 15 years already. So basically I started doing some hacks on, at that time, on the networking stack at NetFister. So, one thing to me, well, I mean, um, it was, I mean, at that time, Linux was, was, was not having the potential that, that it has, well, that has these days. So, I mean, it was way, way smaller thing. Now we are talking about this conference I, I'm coming from. Um, basically, uh, we were talking about Linux being deployed massively in all these Internet of Things devices, so we're probably going to have Linux widely deployed everywhere. So. So at that time, it was quite quite a small thing. I we used to spend quite a lot of time reading code. And the thing that attracted, attracted me the most was the availability of source code and, and the, 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 the fact that I could interact with other people. And especially the fact that it was an international thing. Um, yeah, it was something that really, really attracted me. Right? So, but, So um, I get to talk about NF tables. NF tables is the major development effort that's going on now in NetFilter. Uh, NetFilter is a project that was started in 1998. Um, it was started by Rusty Russell. He's a Australian hacker. Now, now working on Linux technology. Actually, not not doing any any Linux kernel anymore. So. Um, Rusty started the project to just to try to uh, aggregate the people that were contributing on the firewalling subsystem at that time, and and also actually he was trying to escape from the one of the main Linux kernel mailing list because there were too many flame days going on there. So he he tried to to to, to focus on technical stuff and and consolidate at the same time the community. So what? Uh, by that time, we ended up having uh, IP tables. It was it was the first incarnation of 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 the, the firewall that had been deployed massively um, on Linux. We have we have two more tools before that, but they were kind of toy thing. And now we are pushing for a new a new uh, packet classification framework that is NFT. It's a modernized version. It's trying to address all the problems that we have in IP tables. And I'm just going to show you a bit the problems that we have and the way we are trying to address them. And so you get a bit of a grasp of, of what we are aiming to get. It's it's already it's below 1.0 so we are trying we are trying to so we are telling users that this is kind of still under development stuff but I know of people that are already using it in production so we actually getting quite a lot of good feedback from, from, from users. So, um, one of the things that we had in Epitables is that 
uh, IP table was originally designed to support all IPv6, IPv4 only. So at some point, someone, uh, someone came up to the mailing list and said, I would like to support IPv6. And, and the, the software pattern that we used at that time was copy and paste. So <laughs> someone basically took the IPv4 code base. It, it just basically modified all the structures just to fit IPv6 addresses. And at the, at the end of the day, we, we ended up having two code bases looking exactly the same. So that was really a real problem from the development perspective. Because every time we we had we, we wanted to we, we needed to fix a bug in MP, in MP tables we were we had to fix it in MP tables too, and and in in the in the mid run also we 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 ended up having inconsistency in introducing inconsistencies inconsistencies between the IPv4 and IPv6 versions so of the user when when defining the the firewalling policy. Uh, when moving from IPv4 to IPv6, he had to make an effort to take into consideration the, the, these asymmetries that, that we have. So, kind of just, it's, it's just basically a bit more administration overhead on, on this from, that the user has to deal with, right? So, um, and, but someone else came later on and said, you know, in Linux we have a bridge support. It's widely used these days in, in virtual environment with virtual machines and so on just to, to connect those, those virtual machines without having to deal with the overhead of the IP stack. So someone else came up later and said, I would like to have also bridge filtering support. And so we got EB tables. That is actually a copy and paste for IP tables. Again, so we have three code base with the same, looking almost the same. But in EB table, it was even worse because <clears throat> we got another developer that actually split from the core team and he, and he, he made modifications, ad hoc, ad hoc modifications to the EV tables. So, for example, he this is not a mistake. This is on purpose. So he decided that um, the actions should not be in uppercase, should be lowercase. That is actually actually good because sometimes in the tables you have to you have things in uppercase. You have dash dash, uppercase, lowercase, and, and so on. Which is why why do I have to use all these lower and uppercase, and why do I, do I have to keep all these in mind? So. Um, he introduced this inconsistency, and we have to live with it. And we couldn't we couldn't change this because in Linux we take we take backward compatibility quite seriously. So once something is exposed to the user, we tend to keep it forever. And it's a heavy it's kind of heavy weight thing that you have to carry a long time because it's if that Linux is going to be it's it's been there for already for 25 years, and it looks like it's going to be there still for even more time. So. That is one of the problems, and it, it's not only that. But in, in AV tables, we we got that something that looks looks like it's going to work in in AV tables. It doesn't really work. You get this error message, descriptive error message, telling you that you didn't specify the Ethernet protocol, whatever. So at some point, you you are lost. And and now also we got an another tool, the ARP, because someone else, I think something like four or five years later found useful to, to filter out ARP traffic, the ARP requests and ARP replies that were addressed to to the local to the local, local, local system, right? So it, it's a mess. So so what 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 have we done in that regard to fix this? So we we came up with, with NFT. So basically now we have a consistent syntax for all families. So basically all, you only have to replace the family here. In this case, this is IPv4. So you just place here IP6, bridge, ARP, or we have a new family that is signed in. I'm going to explain you how this works. So now we, the user doesn't have to bother about all these, all these problems. The INET thing is, is quite new. Actually, one of, the, one of the major challenges now is that we are likely going to move from IPv4 to IPv6. Um, at some point, right? Probably, probably this is something that I would like to know. I mean, we, we get something like 20. It's 15 percent. I think if you if you look at the statistics now, the, there is some statistic. I think is Google providing them, showing how how many how much uh, IPv6 traffic we are getting at this moment. It's something like 50 percent of the traffic in the world. So 
It's still little, but at some point we, we are supposed to, to migrate to the six, right? So we will have to deal with a situation that we, where we will have this dual stack scenario where we, we will have IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time, right? So some people are actually already dealing with this in, in, in real in real stuff. So so what happened in that case? They have to add the same rule twice: one to IPv IP, IP tables and, and another another for IPv6 stage. What are system administrator and DevOps doing to deal with this? So basically, they have scripts, and those scripts propagate the same rule to the two. To, to, to both backends, to IP tables and IP6 tables. Sometimes the script does something wrong, things get inconsistent, and something gets broken, and so on. So now that problem is going to be now solved with this family. Basically, if you add a rule there, it's going to it's going to fill the traffic both for IP4 and IP6. So you just keep one single rule set at the same time. Okay? Next please. Something else. Um Users, users, they like they like scripting. They like scripting, and it's very easy to find IP tables and scripts on the internet with people sharing the rules that they're using. And another thing that people people like to have is comments, right? Because they forget why they add some rule into their policy. So um, main problem is that you can find lots of scripts on the internet for IP tables, and those scripts they are actually defeating one of the most interesting features in IP tables that is that um, and in IP tables if you place uh, your rule set and you use some specific commands you're going to apply that rule set atomically okay in one go um, thing is that if you place a list of commands of IP table command inside inside a shell script it's it's going to apply one rule by one and it's not only slow but it's not it's actually defeating this these atomicity properties that we have. Right? So and, and then we tell users, you know, you, you use our native representation in IP tables, but that native representation um, doesn't mix well with all these comments and doesn't have any way to include another rule set. So it doesn't have a way to split the rule set in several files because sometimes users they have they have part of the rule set is automatically generated by some robot. So based on some list of IP addresses, the robot is going to generate automatically the rules and they are going to uh, load that rule set, right? So, um, it, it's not, in IPv6 it's not that you can really split the rule set in all these files and keep it tidy. Now in NFT we have we have this include, this include feature. We also have variables, it's something that users wanted. So, uh, we you guys have, have problems with numbers, right? We tend to forget them, right? So, so these variables they they actually um, allow us to to, to improve the re uh, reliability of the rules. So, and and then another interesting feature in NF tables is that this this square this uh, curly braces they represent a set. So you have a list of IP addresses, and this gets transformed in the kernel in a set. Actually, the, the, the kernel selects the, the, the best set representation based on, on what you provide. You can enrich that uh, representation indicating things that you would like to have in that set. I, I'll show you later. So, so it's that we have a integrated built-in set infrastructure that allows us to build these this um, this all all these to, to place all these IP addresses, IP addresses without having to, to to copy and paste the same rules several times and just changing the, the IP address. Okay, next please. So just an example of what I was just showing is in IP tables. Basically, we would need if I want to accept four different kinds of IP RCMP v6 traffic, I would need to add four rules. That also. It's a problem in, in terms of performance because every time we add a new rule, it's 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 more overhead, more more cycles that we spend in evaluating if the rule if this rule is matching this packet. So basically, if in the traditional way we express firewall in policies, we have a list of rules in here, right? So we evaluate the first rule: is it matching? No. Next one: matching? No. Next one. So worst worst case is always. The, the, the last rule that we find a matching, right? So, so in this case, we would, we would get four rules, 
but using the, the built-in set infrastructure, we only get one. Okay. Next, please. So let's. I am. I was trying to skip this a bit because last time. Oh no, no, this is about ingress. So we we got a new book. I don't know if you're familiar with IP tables. Basically, what we have in IP tables is a, is a set of books that allows us to filter traffic in in from different positions in, in the network stack, in the, in the Linux network stack. So basically we have the, the initial chains we have are the per routing chains and they are happening before before we 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 involve the uh, we look up for a route in the forward internet base. Right? So this is this is we filter here. Um, it's basically that we are going to we are going to get more performance because the, the laser will filter the more code we run, right? So that, that is an intuitive thing. So um, before per routing, uh, in Linux we used to have an ATC hook at ingress. It's actually having way, way earlier than, than per routing. Um, from layer two, following the OSI stack layer, right? So basically per routing is at the very beginning of, of the handling that we perform at the layer three or three, right? So, so um, long time ago, what we had is TC to, to filter from ingress. TC looks a bit like this, right? I was actually trying to, to show you a valid example, and I didn't even manage to make it. And I got this error, this error reporting from the current. So it's very, very useful, right? So I don't know if you, how many of you have used TC. Okay. Yeah. So. It's a mess, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. So, so we can do better. So we only needed to add a new hook for ingress, and actually, and actually, we, we are getting filtering traffic from ingress. We are getting double performance, so we can drop <coughs> packets at a double a double packet per second rate. Right? This is very good because in, in the internet too, these days, what, what we have is that uh, the, the 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 days where we, we have that trusted environment in the internet and everybody was meeting together, right, and we, it was a lovely place, it's gone, right, and we have some quite, quite a lot of unwanted traffic, sometimes getting to, into that data center is good to drop it as soon as possible, right, so the earlier we do it, the best, right, so, and all this, and another, another good thing is that all this is generic, so no matter what need you have, no, no, matter, no matter what hardware configuration you have, this is going to work for you, and it's going to do it quite early, and and it's not going to be dependent on, on the your on, on the platform you select or hardware configuration. <coughs> right? So it's, uh, no, no matter what happens, you have, it's going to drop tra traffic as early as possible. So next, please. So um, let's try. I, I, I try to skip this because last time I talk I provide too many tips and people um, told me it was too long. So, um, in case you have questions later on, I can just provide more details. So basically, what we have in NF tables is a, a specialized virtual machine. It got 28 instructions at this moment, and this instruction with these instructions, like in a Lego fashion, you can just combine them, and, and you express your rule. So from the from the user space side, what we have is is, is a compiler. Basically, it's what it, comp it compiles the rule into the the, the virtual machine instruction set and it push it into the kernel. And it's not only doing that, but when dumping the rules from the kernel, it's sort of decompiling that by code, <laughs> textifying and getting it back in a human human readable way to the user. Right? So it's represented a bit like this. So we get this, the NFC syntax, we parse it, we build some abstract syntax tree, we make some evaluation transformation optimization, we compile it, and we use some interface to communicate with the Linux kernel. The name is Netlink. It's a socket family. So let's see a, a quick example. So we one of the one of those 28 instructions is payload. And in payload you have to specify the base, the offset, and the length. You know what field I'm matching in IPv4? Sorry. What what field do um, am I matching here? So basically, I'm fetching base at network at the network header, and then I take an offset by nine, and I'm taking just 
one single byte, and then I'm pressing, I'm, I'm placing that, that thing I'm fetching, that, that byte, I'm placing it in, in the A scratch pad area, A register, and then I'm going to compare if that register matches with value number it's six. IP for six. Huh? Uh, IP version? Ooh. No. no, it's actually, I'm matching for TCP, I'm matching for the, for the, uh, at the IP for the IP for transport protocol. Okay, so it's it's telling me is this is this TCP traffic? If, if it would be seventeen, it would be UDP traffic, right? So basically, what I'm doing here is just building a rule that is going to check for the the, the transport protocol that is coming in the IP four field, and then if it evaluates true, it follows up and drops it and drops the packet. Otherwise, it breaks and keeps evaluating more rules, right? So this is okay. So this is the little thing we have. So basically, we used three instructions, and they it's good. So uh, for those that are familiar with IP tables, it's not that we are reusing many concepts that we have uh, there. Um, basically, in IP tables, we have tables. Tables are the top level container structure. So everything is contained in a table. We still have that, that in NFT. The thing is that in NFT tables, we, we, we used to have a predefined set of tables and chains coming with those tables, okay? So in NFT, this is, this is fully configurable. So you only create the tables you need and you only register the chains that you need. What is the reason for that? So the thing is that um, um, all these predefined chains, they get registered into the, into the Linux networking stack and even if they have no chains, people were reporting that it was consuming some slight number of cycles of CPU that were wasted. So um, it is good if you only register what you need, right? So why, why get all that bunch of chains that you don't need? So now, you just create a table. Initially, it's just empty. So next, uh, now I, uh, yeah. So and then we we can populate that table with chains. Okay, chains are containers of rules. Good, and they need they need a configuration to specify from what hook you are going to register them, and a priority in case you have multiple rules. The priority tells us how, how we'll build the pipeline. So, so if this change should come before another one or after another one, right? So, um, and then some default policy in case we find no rule matching the policy. Okay? So, this, this requires this explicit configuration and then once one we get the chain, we can start adding rules to it. You look, um, if you see here, um, we can we can select any any name for the table we create. Same thing for chains. In a table, we used to have predefined names for that, right? And this is just a simple rule, a very simple rule set relaying on the connection tracking table. <coughs> so it's basically we have we have a a state machine in that filter that that allows us to to follow track of um, of of. Uh, of flows on how how the, the, the protocol the protocol communication is going on between the two peers if, if it's yet to perform to perform conformance conformance checks and uh, to see if it's evolving in the right way for example let's say we get we start I talk to you and there is a link space firewall in the middle and you start sending me act packets so that state machine is going to say act packet this is the first packet I see this guy is sending to me right so this is not right, and it's going to it's going to signal the firewall by telling that this packet is invalid in my opinion. But the final decision of what to do with that packet is left to the to the policy. So it's not that if if you send me an act, it's going to just drop it. You have to specify that. But anyway, you have that state machine, and that state machine has allows us to to indicate based on only four states. It's new, established, related, and invalid. New means this is the first packet I see in one direction. Established means I have seen a, co a conversation going on between the two parties. So you send me a packet and I reply. So now I enter established state. 
and I have related that is a special state. For example, in case I send you a UDP packet, you don't reply, and, and that port is closed. You, re you reply with ICMP, right? So like it, it, it's like I speak to you in French and you reply in Chinese, right? So this, this is this kind of related state that catches that case. And we have another, another case that is the invalid case. So if the if if state machine considers that it's not right, you can, you can indicate that, that it's not correct or count how many packets hit invalid and drop them, lock them for them. Okay? So this is a very basic configuration just to allow SSH basically. Allowing yeah, connection to, uh, to port 22 SSH and nothing else. And allow that the system, if, if the system starts a communication, a flow is going to be accepted, any reply is going to be accepted. It's a very, very basic policy. Just two rules and actually it's, it's good enough for to start with, better than nothing. Right. So next thing. So another thing that we had in IP tables is that IP tables was made in a way that every extension we had, we had, we wanted to match a, a new protocol. We needed, we needed a new extension. And in, in the kernel and in user space, we have we have a, a mapping one to one between the the the, the extension that allows us to match some specific part of that protocol and the way we represent it in the kernel. In NFT, that is not that way. We have this virtual machine that is generic. Actually, it's a bit silly because we just uh, pass to the kernel um, offset, basis, and number of bytes. It's not that the kernel really understands what is going on or what is matching, right? But the, the worst thing about IP tables is that um, what, what you could match depended on that extension. So if you wanted to match based on a range, then you have to add support for ranges to that extension. For that protocol, you need to extend that protocol to support ranges, right? And then if you wanted to support um, prefixes, then you have to you, you have to add you have to you needed to add that support to that extension too. And all these the small things need were replicated over all, all over the, the existing ex extensions, right? So it was extra engineering in effort and very very easy to introduce inconsistency. So now this is generic. Right. Um, so no matter if you need ranges, um, prefixes, this is a little a list of flags, or you want to perform some bitwise operation, or you want to set some value or set some value based on another field, you can combine all this. It's way more expressive and it's generic, right? And it's also consistent. So next, please. Uh, yes, uh, this was color. <laughs> Good. So um, something else um, uh, is that we in IP tables we used to have one counter per rule, no matter if you need it or not. That was also consuming cycles. Um, so now you have to explicitly specify in your rule that you want a counter. Good. It's this is just another pro uh, design that um, for performance reasons, okay? So, so no no mandatory counters anymore. Another thing that we didn't have in every table is that, is that it was not possible to specify more than one single action in one rule. So you, you have to use jumps to another chain in, and from that chain then specify the, the next action on the packet. This was Increasing the complexity of, of the rules that you have to that, that, the, that the sysadmin has to deal with. Now this is done. So basically, as long as you have actions that are non-terminating, for example, in this case, this is just logging a packet, and in the log message, it's going to prepend this this prefix, right, invalid. So um, this non-terminating action is going to be followed by this terminating action that is probably back. And all that was in the rule. We have an interactive mode, we have a shell board native in NFT. It doesn't have auto-completion yet, but it will have at some point, so you don't have to remember all uh, commands and options that we have. So you can probably just type the initial characters and then tap tap and get suggestion from NFT, right? We already have history and it's pretty basic at this level, but I mean we are going to have more future on that one. 
Yeah, that's sort of basically set a map infrastructure. We cannot only build sets, but we can build maps and we can build also name sets. So um, the first one, it's very simple, just matching all TCP traffic going to port 22 and uh, 443, right, and count them. Um, this, this we call them anonymous sets or built-in implicit sets, right? These sets, they, you cannot modify the content, okay? So this is not flexible for some scenarios where we want to add elements dynamically, right? So, so we, can create, we can create a set, for example, whitelist, and we have to specify the data type that we are going off, off, off the, the, of all, what we are going to store in the set. So, so uh, from a rule, then we indicate what selector is going to match to what set. This, this add indicates that um, this is referring to a, an existing name set. And then we perform the action. And then we have a command to, to add elements or delete them or we can, you can add more than one, several of them. We also support ranges, ranges there, so you can also specify ranges, you can use prefixes. And we, go, we can also build, build maps. This is another use case that is kind of interesting because in IP tables, you, you need that, I mean, um, you need, I told you before that you need one rule. In many cases, you need one rule per, I mean, in this case, you would need one rule to map Every traffic coming from this network is going to use this address as so for the source now that we are going to perform, right? In IP tables, this, this would result in two rules. But if you, if you have a more massive mapping, you will need as many rules as networks you, mo you want to map to an IP address, right? So again, performance problem because of the linear inspection, right? Linear evaluation. So in, in here, what we have, we use, we rely on, on, on the set infrastructure to build a map. Basically, this rule says, um, let's add a rule to the NAT table, the IPv4 NAT table, to the post routing chain, where, that is where we perform always source NAT. And basically, the IPv, based on the IPv4 source address, based on that, we are going to set what is the SOAR NAT that we are going to apply? So this SOAR NAT depends on the source IP address, right? So and here we have we have basically the mapping. So. Good. Next thing, please. So uh, sometimes you, you need sometimes you need to build whitelist or blacklist, right? This blacklist or whitelist. Um, allows us to place uh, elements, for, for example, IP addresses, and give them a lifetime after that they expire, right? So you, if you have some guy in the network misbehaving, you place <coughs> black white list or, or black, that, that black list, or if you have a good record of behaving the right way, you place it in the white, the white list, right? For some time until you uh, start changing in the same way, right? So basically, what we have here is that we have to specify this timeout flag, so the kernel knows that we are going to use timeouts for each element that we are going to add. And then we have a command to add not only IP addresses, actually, you could add anything. You could use any selector available in the, in the packet header. And I'll show you, it's even more flexible because we can concatenate them. I'll show you. Next thing. Uh, <coughs> one question. So, uh, timeout. I guess there's a command to read, to, like, to know which uh, rules you have applied. What happens when the timeout expires? Times out? Like, will I get, like, you have this rule, but then it's not applied anymore, or it's just not there at all? Yeah, so basically you have the set, you have elements in the set. As long as that set is, is alive, as that, that element is alive, it's going to match the rule. Okay? Mm -hmm. once, that, once the timeout expires, expires for that element, the element is gone. And that rule doesn't match anymore. So. We we can also build use use this map dictionary infrastructure to, to with non-base chains. We have two types of chains. We have base chains, base chains. The, the configuration in the configuration you have to specify uh, the hook point. So every time you register a a base chain, it's a chain that actually sees real traffic. 
And we have also non-based chains. Non-based chains, by default, they see no traffic, but they can be, they can, be, they can be, uh, they can, you can refer to them from from a role, just to, in case, in case, in case something is matching, you can tell, you can tell NFT or IP tables because this comes in, comes from from IP tables. You can you can tell IP tables or NFT jump to this role in case that this is matching. And then in that chain, non-based chain, you get you get some a, a more specific rule set for that's creepy, that creepy things that you have matched. It's a way to, to arrange to to to, uh, to arrange your, your rules in a in a in a tree. Okay. So and this is good for maintainability reasons. So you keep you keep specific rules applying to, to what you know in a way that is easier to, and also for performance reasons because it's that it's matching this, then you jump to that chain, and then you have the subset of the rules that applies to that packet, right? So, for example, uh, a way to use these non based chains is just add one for each layer four transfer protocol. Okay, so we can create one non based chain for TCP, the TCP chain, the UDP, the SMP, and then that there we are, we are going to place the rules that apply specifically to those protocols, the kind of filtering that we want to apply. All the classification that we want to do. So, and, and, and before in IP tables, we needed three rules for that. We needed three rules like this. Basically, telling in case that IP protocol is matching TCP, then jump jump to TCP. Otherwise, another rule for UDP, another rule for ICMP, or for each protocol. Now, now this this is this is very fast actually <coughs> because based on the IP protocol, we have this vertical map, and this vertical map. It's going to indicate that based on what you match that is on your left hand side, we are going to jump to that non that, that non base chain. We can also use this vertical map to accept or draw packets. Okay. So next thing. Concatenation allows us to combine several selectors. Um, so basically what you have to do is you have to use the dot here. And you have the different selectors. This concatenation is composed. This is a tuple of three components, right? So you have Ethernet source address plus IP source address plus destination port TCP. Good. So um, in this set, we are going to add entries based on these three components, right? So you can you can quickly match quickly match. In, in, in a multi-dimensional fashion, right? It's not like only we are, because you usually don't don't only want to match one single selector, right? You, it's usually good if you can match several things at the same time, right? It's it means this allows us to have less rules, and as I said before, the less rules we have in our rule set, the more performance we achieve, right? So, so this is a simple one. This one is combining vertical maps. So as you can see, this is very flexible. This is using the net family. This is a new family that, that matches for the ingress hook. The ingress hook is located in the. It's it's a, a family that has been introduced for layer two filtering, so it's quite heavy, right? So here is just in case that we see traffic from this guy from uh, going to this port, then you go to this white list chain, and then you want that white list chain. You apply to the policy about for people that you trust, okay? And all this is not that it's not that this is. I mean, in the kernel, this is implemented. As a, in this case, is 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 implemented with the, with hash tables, so it's it's scales out nicely, right? So we can also define sets with concatenation. So again, we can add dynamically and remove elements. Next thing, please. Slide. Another feature we have is this flow table uh, thing. It's basically we can create a flow table. We indicate any random name. In this case is traffic per IP protocol, and we can we can fill these flow tables dynamically based on the traffic we see. So here, what we have is I want to have a flow table that is composed of. Uh, from every packet we see, we extract the source IP address and we extract the destination TCP port and we are going to fill an entry in the flow table based on that information we get. So then we can list the content of that flow table that is dynamically populated. So based on what we see, we are going to get new entries in the flow table. Right? 
So for example, we could apply we could apply counters. So we could measure um, for this IP address going to this port, how many packets files have been circulating between them. Okay. We can also combine this with timeout, so we can actually build a flow table that where that where that entries expired as after some time if, if we see no packets, right? So next slide please. And and then as a very simple to, uh, very simple feature, it's comments. People like to sometimes to add comments to rules. They remember the reason why they are keeping that there. This one is very simple. You can combine also comments with elements. This is also good, especially if you build white lists also, so you also remember what is matching to that guy or probably the reason why he got into the white list or the black list or any kind of user defined information that we want to place there, right? So, next slide. We have these variables, the scripting. The scripting is something that we want to even extend. We want to extend this, these scripting features that NFT has even more. This is what we have right now, but we need to have more things for follow it up. So it's just we define a simple IP address with a, a variable, right? Or we can even build, use them to build a set, and then we could even keep in a separated file the bad guys NFT file, and then from a different file we keep the master policy. Right, so if your robot is generating based on some logic, this guy is a bad guy because I'm seeing this and that and so on. So I place it here and and you don't have to mingle with your master policy that usually if the robot makes a mistake or there's a bug or whatever, probably can leave you with no policy at all, that is not good, right? So next. We have also named objects. So far, we support quotas and counters, but we want to score more. These name objects are uh, very useful in case that you want to account for traffic or enforce quotas or or, or um, make some distinction in the way you are going to handle traffic after a given, a given amount of bytes that you see, right? So any kind of handling you not only it's not always about accepting all proper packets, right? We have way more actions. So but in this case we just created a counter quota. This counter quota resides in the filter table. That is a table that need, needed to be created before, right? Because everything is configurable in NFT. So and the name of this counter is HTTP traffic. So we could add a rule to say um, oh this is this is this is a quota object very similar. We could just add a rule for every packet going to HTTPS port, so it's going to bump the HTTP traffic object. It's going to update it. Good. But also we can combine the, this with maps, so you don't have to add and rules again, right? And this in the kernel, this is using a hash table, so quickly. That's the TCP destination port, what object do we update? This one. And then we have the facilities to list those objects. We can also automatically dump them and reset them in one go. So just get all that information in case you want to perform some accounting tasks, whatever. So next, um, we can also combine these with dynamic maps. So in case that we are populating this bad guys map that we created before. And this map basically on the left hand side we get a MP4 address, on the right hand side we get these counters, and those counters are going to be they're going to specify what counter name this needs this counter needs to be created before, right? So you have to explicitly create the counter before you build the map. Okay? So yes, is here is where we create the counters. And then we can just yeah, populate that map, add new New mappings, remove them, dynamically, okay? Next. Um, restoring the rule set is relatively easy. You have to append this in case you want to achieve exactly the same behavior as in IP tables. Uh, because in IP tables, if you were using, if you are familiar with that, we have IP table restore tool, and that was flashing the previous rule set. This is now, <coughs> this is not, this is not the way it's working with NFT by default, okay? 
So we, so we want it. We want it. We want it to be more flexible. So now, if you want exactly the same behavior, you just place in the file in the rules of NFT file. This oh, this is a mistake actually. <laughs> this shouldn't be here. This NFT shouldn't be there, right? So it should be only flash rules. Okay. So just you echo flash rule set, just first line in the file, and then you list your rule set, you dump it, place it there, and then with minus F, you can atomically apply that rule set. Everything that is placed in a file that is passed to NFT using the minus F option is going to be applied atomically. So we can also perform incremental updates based on a subset of rules that are going to be updated. You want, I want to remove this number of elements, and also add these ones and all that, you place it in a file. So your robot, you can just put that file, pass it to your robot, and your robot is going to push it to the kernel. And all that, the kernel is going to have it in one go. <laughs> Whether it applies everything or it doesn't apply anything, because we have a, we have a two phase common protocol actually. So we have a preparation phase where we try to populate and add all the things, modify everything. But for example, if we don't find any of the any of the objects that the user refers to, the transaction is supported, so we go back and we say to the user, I'm sorry, this incremental update is not good. So it's it's a full blown two phase computer. Okay? So we also have we can monitor changes, we have NFT monitor and you you can um, uh, inspect all you can follow track of all changes that are going on because you have several robots working with the rule set or also humans. Whatever we can expect that. Next, please. And that's basically what I have. So you can grab the code, but most distributions are already packing NF tables. Um, if you if you want to play with it, I suggest you use one of the latest uh, NFT versions and also uh, recent kernels. It's better because we have we have bugs that we have been fixing so far. So the, 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 the newer, the best, we have some wiki page that we are attracting users from the community to get it better. Um, we have a man page, any case of bugs, you can file a bug, an entry to bug data. And we also created a Twitter account that is something that um, we, didn't, we don't actually use quite well. but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we spent so, so 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 much time on terminal black black screens. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, alien for us. Good. So well, that's it. Do you have anything else after this? Yes, just a summary of this. So we keep having a rule-based language. Uh, DevOps, sysadmins, they are familiar with rule-based languages. Linear inspection is not good, right? So that we are going to pro we provide the means to express things in a way that is going to, uh, to, to it's, it's going to allow you to classify plugin quickly, spending less cycles, and that, that is more performance, right? Uh, it's way more expressive than NFT, as you can see. We have uh, these maps, we have concatenations, uh, and we have dynamic sets that can be populated, remove elements of them. All these can be combined the way you need, right? And we have, we have fixed all this inconsistency we have across families, and 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 if you start using it, I suggest that you use the ingress hook. Uh, the ingress hook it, it, it is also good in case you have you have to deal with a dual stack environment because basically it's operating for layer two. But the fact that you operate for layer two it doesn't mean that you cannot do you can inspect the, the packet. Part of that you can do it actually. You can actually. So, so I suggest that you, you use the ingress hook, the ingress hook more, right, for filtering, especially for to drop on content traffic. And I think that's all what I have. In case you have any question. So now we are going to have the IP four tables, the IP six tables, the EV tables, and the NFT tables. Yes, I know. And our and in and out. So. Is it at any point going to unify in the same source code? So you're keeping the public interface of the IP tables, but then the need use the <coughs> or something like that? Yes, that's, right. that's a good question. We have we have the a compatibility layer, and that compatibility layer allows users to to keep using IP tables syntax based thing and use 
and use NFT in the kernel, in the backend. So at some point, we should be, one, once we, um, I mean, at some point, we, we, we could get rid of quite a lot of code, uh, at least 50% of it. So we, we will reduce the, the maintenance burden, right? Because now we have basically quite a lot of packet classification code in the kernel to do the same <laughs> thing, right? So, but, yes. Then I have another question. Where it's, why is the kernel a good place to put the build for machine? Because from the architecture you explained, it seems like the kernel, well, you have this netlink protocol where the use to the kernel, like filter this to that, and then the virtual machine could be a standalone user process perfectly, right? Yeah. So what were the reasons, if any, to put it in the kernel and not in user space? Yeah. Um, so the netlink interface is basically provides the control plane. Yeah, so it's it's from user space. This is the, the, the kind of control plane you have to, to configure this NFT thing, right? So um, uh, the, the thing about having this in the kernel is to, to perform the, the filter the filtering earlier, right? And also at the same time, combining with all the features that we have in Linux. Linux is a generic. It's I mean the two things that that um, I consider that are the best about Linux is that Linux is a commoditizer, so no matter what hardware you run, um, the software configuration that you, you, you've done, you can migrate it from, from one system to another very quickly, right? Without much hassle. So it's not that one vendor goes bankrupt and you have to drop all the work you've done, right? So it keeps working because Linux works with every hardware. So that was, that's one of the points. The, the other point is that the other good thing is that you can combine it with all the features that we have. It's a generic stack. And in that generic stack, you have plenty of things, plenty of components that, that you can flag, use. You, you have IPsec stack. So in case that you have to build uh, IPsec tunnels, you just, with a couple of commands, you just, I'm going to set up a tunnel with another office that I have, and all, all the traffic going through the public internet is going to be encrypted. You have lots of ciphers, so you have extremely it's it's very very extremely configurable. You have lots of features going on, and in that case, NFT it just integrates. It's just another component integrated into that feature-rich environment. So and if uh, it's just personal opinion, not a question, but it, it's a bit worrisome because if you have to keep backwards compatibility forever, which is something I love. Yes. But then you use the kernel as a tool set, as a set of libraries, which it's a usage that seems to be increasing. Yeah. And the size of the Linux kernel is going to increase. Yeah, it's getting blown and blown. I'm not to deny that. It's, it's fat, that's it's fat yeah. like, a, like a big meatball. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very, very fat. Yes, the Linux kernel is getting very fat. Um, and we, we try to keep features. In, in a way that you keep them in the periphery, so it's, it's not that you have you have some some core path that is common to everyone that you have to spend cycles on, right? And then you have features that, depending on what you request, you spend more cycles on. I mean, m more features mean more cycles you burn, right? So kind of you have some generic path. We try to keep it tidy. And it's critical. Try to try to try to make sure that. Um, we don't waste cycles on that on that path that everyone runs, and then you have a specific components that, depending on the feature, the features you, you request is going to it's going to take more cycles or less. But anyway, probably I, I don't know if you're familiar with all these um, solutions that are now showing up for like EPDK, or did you heard about them? So it's basically um, you have a very minimalistic driver. And then you program yourself what you want to do. Right? So you just make a program that once you get the packet from the link, you just decide what you want to do. Obviously, you, you run way less code, so you are going to cheat better numbers. But then you use all the feature sets, feature set that is available in Linux. So it depends for some specific purpose device. Probably you can look at those programmable environments to. to Form something very very specific, but if you want to integrate Linux, Linux running virtual machines, right? Let's say we have um, 
KVM environment with several virtual machines, or you're using containers, Docker, whatever, massively, right? Um, you have to combine that with, with the stack we have in Linux. And this, this NFC is just the, the, the tool of the day that you can use to, to classify traffic. to the book, it will be easier to the book. Yes, uh, yes, I, I didn't mention, but we have a, we have a very, we have a new, I forgot to mention that, we have a tracing, new tracing infrastructure. It's way better than what we have now in the table. It's not text-based that you have to inquire to, you don't have to type DMS to, to see what's going on. Um, actually, you can even, you can even narrow down to what traffic you want to do create traces, because yeah. especially if you have a very busy uh, gateway, you begin to get like, boom, lots of, lots of trace messages, right? So yes, it, there is a new command, I forgot to mention that, it's NFT monitor trace, and then you have to add a rule to specify <coughs> what traffic you would like to trace, and, and it's going to, it tells you what the packet, what path is following in, in the, when, when evaluating the, the policy. So yes, yes, we have improved that, I forgot to improve. Another question: uh, Contracting tools will be inside. Yeah. Yes, that's a good question. We we have the contract tools. They they currently um, they have a mm -hmm. IP tables syntax like um, interface. I mean the way the way you express things in contract looks like IP mm -hmm. tables. We want we want to integrate contract tools into NFT. So it's going to another thing that we wanted to achieve with with NFT is to keep the to keep it also provide a consistent um, um, ecosystem interface to the user. So the user will type NFT this contract or list CT or something like that. And then it's going to use the same syntax that we use to express rules. It's going to be used, you can use it to filter out what entries you want to display from the connection tracking and so on. So we, we would like that NFT becomes this, the, 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 the tool that, that everyone is going to use to, to, to configure any aspect of, of net filter so we don't have, we are not going to have that proliferation of different tooling and so on that also get inconsistent at all time. So yes, we want, we want to have that. So which kind of version you would uh, recommend? Like, so yeah. for, I mean, you say the newest is always... Yeah, the, the, newest, <laughs> the newest is the best because you get more features but and you get more bug fixes. Um, I mean, currently we have 4.10, and, and we're going to uh, four dot ten is going to be released, uh, I think, on Monday. So, I mean, I mean, anyway, many, many, many distributions are moving at a very fast pace now, and so they, they are coming with very, very recent kernels. So, any any recent kernel. Um, what is the kernel version? You would say that this is something you could use for basic. Oh, um, I mean, three eighteen was was good, but the feature set was quite limited. Okay. Uh, from from that kernel on, but I really would recommend I would recommend you start using kernels for something. So something something new because you're going to get way more features. For example, the uh, the name 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 counters and name coders is, is kind of new thing. It's something that was had three four kind of versions ago. So if you want to use that, you need to upgrade. So, yes. That's good. Thank you very much. And. Uh, and, and tenemos que ir allí, ¿no? Sí, hay un pica pica ahí.